Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Advanced graphics settings coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's video, I will go over some advanced graphics settings that can only be found in the configuration file for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now don't get that confused with performance settings because nothing that we're gonna go over today is going to improve your performance. Everything that we're gonna to cover today is gonna to be specifically geared towards better image quality inside the simulator. Also, in terms of performance, everything that we're gonna go over today should not impact performance negatively either. If you have any comments or questions throughout today's video, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, Make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to locate the configuration file for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The easiest way that I've found to do this is if you have a community folder shortcut on your desktop to just click on that. From here, we can go back to, so we're gonna click on local cache. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, our user configuration file will be right there. Now, if you do not have a shortcut to your community folder on your desktop, I will post my address for my community folder down below. You will just have to input your computer name instead of mine, and it should bring it up for you. Now, there's one caveat to this, and I am using the store-bought version of Microsoft Flight Simulator, so if you are on the Steam purchase version, yours will be in a different location. Okay, so now you have found your user configuration file. We can go down below, highlight it, right click, and open it with any editor of your choice. I recommend either Notepad or Notepad++. If this is your first time opening this file, this may look a little bit daunting to you, but don't worry, we're gonna go through everything step by step. Now, one other thing here is don't change anything other than what I'm going to go over today unless you know what it's going to do. We will cover all the changes for monitor users first, and then once we're done with that, we will cover all of the VR changes later on in the video. The first setting that we're going to take a look at is our shadows. Inside of the simulator, if you go to your graphics settings, the highest that they allow you to choose is 2K shadows. So what we're gonna do is to highlight this number here and you're gonna change it to 4096. What that'll do is override those 2K settings and now you're gonna have 4K shadows inside the cockpit. Now this shouldn't impact your performance negatively, but what I would recommend to do is test this one setting first, hop back in the sim, turn on your FPS counter, and just see if you have a negative impact on your performance. If you don't, then we can move on with the rest of the setting changes. Changing your shadows from 2K to 4K will sharpen all of the shadows up almost real to life. So it's going to really improve the immersion inside of the cockpit. The next thing we're going to take a look at is down in the post-processing section. So we can scroll all the way down until you see post-processing. In the post-processing section, there is one setting that I recommend to change. And there's a couple other settings that I'll go over that are gonna be user preference. I'll explain what they all mean, but for now, let's move on with film grain setting. So let me explain what film grain is gonna do before we make any changes. Film grain is gonna help reduce any pixelization that is gonna be on the clouds and also on the ground. So it will make the ground clearer as you go up higher. Now I did say that this will help reduce pixelization as it will not eliminate all of it inside of the sim, but it will greatly enhance the clarity of the ground and your clouds. To make a change to this, yours will most likely say one next to film grain. To make the change, you're gonna hit backspace and put a zero in its place. That will turn off the film grain. Any of these settings that have a one next to them mean that they are turned on, and if it has a zero, means it is turned off. So now let me go over a couple of these other settings that are gonna be user preference. The first setting that I wanna go over is sharpen. This is either going to increase or decrease the amount of sharpening that you will see inside the sim. Now, again, this is gonna be personal preference, but 
when you spawn inside the sim and you're looking around, if things look a little bit over sharpened to where they're almost grainy looking, go inside the post processing and turn this off. By default, it is going to have a one next to it, meaning that it's gonna be on. For my personal preference, I like to keep sharpening off. Let me know what you think down below. The next setting in the post process that I wanna go over is color grading. Now, again, this is going to be personal preference, but if you find that your colors are a little bit oversaturated inside the sim, then go into your post processing and remove the one next to color grading and add a zero. I personally like that little bit of oversaturation, so I keep this on. One other setting that may be of value is the fringe option. I know some people were having a little bit of color separation on some textures to where reds, I believe, were separating, and the fix to that was to turn off the fringe. If you're not having that problem, then I really wouldn't worry about that. Once you have made all of your changes, make sure to go up to File, down to Save, and that will save all of your changes. Now that we have this done, you can go up to the X, close it out, and start the sim, and let me know what your results are down below, and also let me know what settings you're using for your post process. And for the monitor folk, I guess you're done, so thanks for joining us on today's video. If you have any questions or anything, let me know down below. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tickle on that bell, and you know what to do, smash that thumbs up button. Thanks guys for watching. Now for all of the VR users, let me show you some of the settings that we're going to change in the VR section. The first setting that we're going to take a look at in the VR section is going to be shadows. Similar to what we did in the monitor section, we're going to override whatever you have here and type 4096 and that will give us 4K shadows inside the sim. Once we're done with that, we can scroll all the way down to the post-processing section. All right, so now let's go over a couple of the settings in the post-process section for VR. Now, I do have a couple different recommendations depending on if you're using DLSS or if you're using TAA mode. So let's go over for users who are using TAA mode first. Just for reference, I am using a Pimax Crystal for testing. I am also using the OpenXR Toolkit in which I can adjust all of my colors inside of there as well. So for those of you who are using TAA mode, what I would recommend to do with all of these post processes is just to turn them off. Turn all of them to zero and you'll be good to go. The only one that I don't recommend to turn to zero is the enable, and that is going to mess with your foveated rendering. If you turn that off, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, if you're someone who is using DLSS, then I would also recommend to turn on the sharpening inside post-process. Now, the reason for that is most of the time when you're using DLSS, all of your glass screens in the cockpit are a little bit blurry, if not a lot blurry. By turning on the sharpening in your post process will help really clarify things on those glass screens. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to be as sharp as TAA mode, but it will be significantly clearer for you to read inside of VR. Now this also goes for users who are using TAA mode and have tried DLSS and went, well, now nah, I'm going to switch back because it is just too blurry. But maybe you have had your sharpening on zero in your post-processing. So if you did, turn that on and make it a one here and then go up and save your settings and try it with DLSS. You'll be surprised at just how much clearer it's going to be, and I find that that will remove all of the shimmers that you get outside of the cockpit. So your ground textures, the clouds, I mean, you can see the contrails so clearly with DLSS, and you don't have any of the shimmering that you get with TAA mode. So try it out. Let me know what you think down below in the comments section. And as always, thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, kick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button to all my flight simmer friends around the world. Keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.